This is Mike Lively from Northern University, and this is the second part of Building with Primitives using 3ds Max for PaperVision 3D. Now I want to put a cylinder in there and raise that cylinder up. One thing I'm going to do is this is a little too high, and you see I'm getting a circular marquee here. You can actually change the type of marquee that you're using. And the way you do that, let's click the hand tool down here. And let's move this menu bar over with the hand tool. There you go. And you can see I can actually from here have a drop down menu and select the type of marquee I'm using. I usually like a square marquee. And so we're going to go back to our Q button to get our selection and marquee around. Now we have a square marquee and we're going to bring this down using the W key for translation. And now let's translate this down. I'm going to go to my uh, top view. I'm going to draw my cylinder and translate it up. So let's go over here and select cylinder. And let's go to the middle of my uh, graphic and make a cylinder. And now we're going to translate up. There we go. And let go. Now you want to right click on the screen or if you, if you don't do that, you'll keep drawing cylinders. And you don't want to do that. Let's control Z that or right click to get out of that. Good. And now let's go ahead and hit Q for selection. Come over here to my uh, front view and let's bring our cylinder down. Hit W to basically translate down. And let's fit that right in there. Now once again, I don't think that's centered. So I'm going to come along here and use that align key. So let's hit Q to select and mark here around those. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my hand tool to move my menu over to find that align key. And there's a line. Let's click on that and click on my system and I want to line X and Y and hit apply and now you can see I've moved down a little bit so I need to bring that up a little bit so let's hit OK and I'm going to basically just select the box and hit W and translate it down a little bit there we go everything's looking pretty good pretty happy with that okay so now that's part of the column now I just basically need to basically duplicate and bring this up and this up as clones. Now the famous cloning tool is the shift key. Now in Windows you can shift to select but in 3ds Max the shift key is preserved for cloning. So it's very easy to clone. I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, uh, Alt W larger version. I'm going to click to select the cylinder or click to select the torus. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click W basically to get translation and I'm going to translate and shift that up. Because it's that easy to copy and I'm going to make it an instance and what an instance does basically is a two-way communication so if I change one of these the other one will change as well. I'm going to click on the base now do the same thing. I'm going to hold down the shift key and going to clone it by just dragging up and when I let go there you have it. Make one copy make it an instance and now let's Alt W to take a look at our screen. And you can see things are kind of not quite in the right place. Let me just marquee around that. Going to shift that whole column up there. There we go. Going to hit uh, go to the perspective view. Hit Z extends to bring the whole thing into view. And let's hit Alt W to widen that screen so we can see what's going on. And there's my column. And I come along here and hit this arc rotate just to rotate along around so you can see the column. Very nice. So you've built your column. Let's go to the next part. I'd like to show you what I call the right-click magic that will sometimes get you out of trouble. Say, for example, you've clicked on a cylinder and you begin to, uh, let's hit E, and you begin a rotation. And you realize that, hey, I haven't rotated everything I want to, and if I let go, I'll be in trouble. And one way to do that before you let go of the mouse is just to right-click. And when you do that, it brings you back to where you were before. Nice little trick, and I hope you find some use of it. So in this section, we're going to build our colonnade. We're going to show you the rotational cloning trick. We're going to use the magnet tool, or what's called the angle snap tool, arc rotate, and zoom and hand tool. And we already, I believe, used both of those, but I just want to make sure they were covered. So let's go and use our rotation uh, trick. Now right now, we're going to click over to the top view, and I want to go ahead and zoom out. So I'll hit this uh, little zoom thing here, and zoom out. And we're going to do a nice little trick, uh, something I often use in Second Life. I hit the Q to get our, our selection key and select that. And we're going to use that Shift uh, drag. So go ahead and hit W for the uh, translation. And hold down your Shift key and uh, go ahead and clone your copy. There you go. And let go. And you're going to make an instance in one copy. At this point, uh, I'm going to hit the Z key to get the Z extends. Oh, that's a little too much. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hit the zoom key to get back out. 
There we go. And now I can actually see both versions. Let me marquee around these. So Q, marquee around. There you go. And I can use the hand tool right now to bring it more to where I want it. There you go. And now here comes the rotation trick. I actually want to rotate this thing completely around to make it a column colonnade. So I'm going to hit my magnet, right click on that, which gives me the properties. So any of these tools here in the 3ds Max toolbar, you can right click on, they'll give you the properties. And I want to rotate this a certain angle, and I want the angle to be 22.5 degrees. That's going to give me a perfect colonnade. So I hit OK. And now I'm going to hit E for the rotation tool. Okay, I'm going to show you our rotation trick now. I want to go to the top view here and click and hit Alt W to expand the screen. And now we can see our gizmos. And from this point right here, I'm going to hit Shift key and I'm going to shift that 22.5 degrees. And I've actually made a copy. I'm going to let go. And it's going to ask me how many copies do I want to make. And I'm going to hit 7. And when I do, you see it duplicates 7 times. So now we have a full colonnade. Let's go ahead and save that. Now after saving, I actually had a crash, so it gives me an opportunity to show you something pretty cool. I'm going to go to the file where I saved my 3ds Max file. And there it is right there. It's called My New Column. And I'm just going to drag that file right onto the uh, screen. Hit Open File. And there you have it. That's what we saved. That's our colonnade. Now, that colonnade is not right. It's just stuck together. You can't get in it. So we need to edit that and bring out some space. We may need to make the radius of that columns larger. So let's go ahead and hit Alt-W to get back to uh, click on this screen. Hit Alt-W to get back to our screen. And now you're going to see why I need these orthographic views. Because it's literally impossible for me to come in and cut out those unneeded cylinders. So I can come along here in the top view and just basically marquee around the cylinders I don't need. Could not possibly do this without a lot of work inside um, the perspective view. Once again, let's marquee around and delete. I'm back to my two columns. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually hit our, our zoom glass and we're going to zoom back a little bit so we got a little bit more room to work with. And right now I'm going to hit my Q button, my select button, and going to bring that column down, use, hit the W key and bring it down and spread out that radius a little bit. There we go, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go back to what we've done before. Let's hit the Q key. Let's select both, marquee around. Now we're going to hit Alt-W to get that into a screen so I can see the rotation gizmo. Alt-W. And hit W for E for rotation. And these uh, red, blue, and green uh, gizmos you're seeing are actually called gizmos. And I'm hit Shift and uh, the mouse down and I'm gonna rotate and there's my 22.5 degrees and I'm gonna hit 7 and there you have it and now you can see some space in between them that's alt W back and there's a better colonnade let's click the perspective view alt W so you can see everything magnify or just hit uh, Z it extends, and then you can actually see my colonnade. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and save that as well. And now we're going to go ahead and export that for Swift 3D. So go to Export. And we're going to page up to where I know I'm putting all my Swift 3D stuff. And we'll call this the 3DS uh, Mac stuff. And we'll go ahead and Make sure we export that as a 3ds Studio file, and we'll call it my new columns. Since I'd made one previously, to make sure this all worked out well for this tutorial, and hit save. Hit OK. And now we've exported to be brought into Swift 3D, and we're going to do that next. Just one more quick topic in 3ds Max, and that is how to do a quick render. Let's come here to Perspective View and click Alt-W to get the screen. And then to Quick Render, we'll just hit the F9 key. Now here's the Quick Render, and just a few things here. It comes with its own set of default lights. And when you add your own lights, uh, these default lights get turned off. So sometimes when you add your own light, it seems like it gets darker. And that's because you need to set up your own set of lights. 